Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, of, the, of the four directors, I'm the dyslexic one. <laughs> and I've actually just, I've, I'm always willing to be a guinea pig and to try anything um, to see if it works and to prove. Um, a lot of programs are coming out at the moment and things like that. And I'll be, as I say, I'll be a guinea pig to try anything. But I have tested, tried and tested the Star Griffin test. And I am, as Sandra says, visit, um, visually blind and auditory deaf. <laughs> so I have both of those. Um, one of them being hereditary as well, the dys, dyskinesia, is that right? Dyskinesia, Sandra. Um, hereditary, and that's one thing that I want to bring to your attention because um, a lot of people are in, so they're in denial, especially our parents and the generations um, you know, now. They're totally in denial, so therefore they see, but my child does this, I used to do that. Why? Can you look into it, please? You know, can you save this child from actually going through what you went through? It would, it would really help. It would really help. Um, I find out, and again, please excuse me, I'm using notes. I'm not using the PowerPoint. <laughs> so, because I'm dyslexic, I can look at my notes, okay? <laughs> um, I only find out that I was dyslexic by chance, and I was uh, in those wonderful years of 35 years old, um, and I was changing my career. Um, and I was studying dyslexia, actually, and it was on page 257 of my textbook where it said adult dyslexia, and I could tick all the boxes. So I obviously phoned my mom straight away and said, um, I'm dyslexic. She says, oh, tripe, you know, this and that, and, you know, the education system, and, you know, how moms go, they're very protective over you. <laughs> but that's, that's how I discovered that I was dyslexic. Um, and it took, it took me a while to, to get going. Um, I had my full assessment um, in London. And from there, it, it, I said, no, this is, must be my, one of my God-given talents. Um, if I'm dyslexic, I need to help other people. And I knew there was a huge, big stigma in South Africa about dyslexia. And that's one thing that we are really, really want to change. Um, there are a number of questions I'm, I'm often asked. The first one is, did I enjoy school? No. I didn't enjoy school at all, and the only inkling that we had of dyslexia now that I know it's dyslexia is that one of my teachers told me that I kept on spelling people as popal. Okay. Um, I, was, I was the one, uh, like, like Trevor was as well, I was the one at the back of the classroom, I was in the corner, I never said a word, um, and I didn't want to ask any questions whatsoever. There was, I just did what I was told, that was it. That was how I was going to get through school. And um, if there were, and again, the concessions and accommodations that are now available that, that aren't really, um, how do you say, um, are publicized and things like that enough for the teachers and, and headmasters and, and educational psychologists to know about. If we had um, accommodation concessions when I was in school, I promise you it would have helped me so much. It really would have. One of the things, um, a, a story I'd like to share with you is my mother. Um, I was in boarding school. And obviously you write to your mom and, you know, things like that. It's your daughterly duty and all those. Um, so I wrote to my mom and then um, it was a, every Friday we used to have Postman's Day or whatever where they read out the letters and everything like that. And it was so exciting if you got a letter from your mother. So the one Friday I came and there was a letter for me and I was so excited and started reading it. And it was my letter to my mother and she had corrected all my spelling mistakes. <laughs> After that, my mother didn't get many letters. <laughs> um, another, another thing that was uh, one of the red flags of dyslexia is reading. Okay, And I have to be honest with you, in the past seven years, I've read more books than I did when I was in than the 35 years before I knew I had dyslexia. Because you, once you realize that you're not stupid and that you can do this, things become easier. They do. Um, did it affect my career? Absolutely. When I was ready in Standard 8 to choose my career, I, was, um, I wanted to be a teacher. And um, at that stage, they took your personality into account. Thank heavens. When I got to matric, it was academic. And I obviously did not get those marks. I mean, I didn't even miss it with like one like Trevor. I mean, no way. <laughs> um, uh, sorry. So the next best thing was hotel. And... It was great. Um, in the hotel business, in actual fact, the, the operations director of the F&B um, conference center was my old boss. 
And she was a lifesaver because she was the one that used to check my emails that used to go out before, you know. And she's, very st she's a stickler for, for spellings. So I was very grateful to her. But it's also a place where I could hide. Okay, in the hotel business, I didn't have to try and pronounce all these wonderful names, um, whether they were Afrikaans, Zulu, Kosa, um, you know, English even sometimes. <laughs> and um, I could go to Sir or Ma'am, so I could hide behind this and, and get through and do what I, I needed to do. Um, I was divorced um, before, I got divorced before I knew I was dyslexic. And yes, it affected my marriage as well, because the whole thing is, is that because I didn't know I was dyslexic, again, as Trevor said, it takes me three hours to do what you can do in one hour, and therefore my husband was left at home alone over weekends and all those kind of things, because I was actually just trying to keep up. I was trying to keep up with my job so that I wouldn't lose my job, because obviously you hang on to your job as, as, as fast as you can, and knowing that I, you know, I wasn't that... Um, that Kate, well, to me, I wasn't capable, so I had to make an impression all the time. So I was always the first in the hotel and always the last to leave the hotel every single night. They say laughter is the best medicine. And believe me, you have to learn to laugh at yourself, especially with dyslexia. And I'd like to just share uh, three small stories with you. The first one was um, in the hotel business, you have to learn every single skill you can, and one of them being a barmaid. So I was a barmaid for six months, and I was, um, we had a group of people, playing, uh, men playing bowls, and um, they were brandy drinkers, and we had a, a ring of, of brandy. And so I offered the one gentleman, he said, so what kind of brandy do you have? So I said, well, um, I can offer you some king clip. But meanwhile, what was it? King <laughs> clip drift. Bless you. Um, Another thing that happens is that when you do get tired and things like that, your balance is not the strongest in the world. And um, I had been on a long shift in the hotel business, and we were, um, it was a businessman's hotel, so it was very early, everyone's up and, and eating breakfast and things. It was a full hotel um, at that stage, it had to be. Um, and I was walking through the kitchen, uh, and I just tripped over my own feet, and I fell flat on my face in front of all these people. And so what do you do? And the lady that was helping me was three times my age, <laughs> helping me up off the floor. <laughs> but you smile and carry on. <laughs> and then uh, another story of mine is the problem with dyslexic is time. Time, I promise you now, it's amazing. A student of mine in London, you could run by the clock. He was 15 minutes late for everything. Everything, and exactly 15 minutes, not one minute less, one minute more. No, 15 minutes late every single time. And I remember we had this huge big choir production and they were all singing and everything like that. And um, anyway, and when you, in London when you get to 16 you start wearing a, a suit to, to school. And he was, he was very good looking and he was, he, he was immaculate really and truly. And um, he walked and we were waiting at the door. For him to come in and, and I can't remember his name I have to be totally honest with you can't remember his name but I sat there at the door waiting for him <laughs> so I could take his jacket and he could go and sneak in <laughs> and join the choir okay and uh, for me my brother um, was in London and he told me that I needed to get a new watch okay now the watch I had was just a cheap watch that I put on and everything he says no listen please you know you're embarrassing me now um, so I said, okay, fine. So I went and I most, bought the most expensive watch I've ever done. And it's, um, hold on a sec, I have to look at this. <laughs> it's, um, yes, DKNY. I hope I've got that all correct. DKNY watch. It was beautiful. Um, it was very slender and everything like that. You know, things you wear to the parties and that. And it had the 12 and the 6, and the, the clock went round. It didn't have any other numbers on it. Okay. Well... <clears throat> I was either an hour early or an hour late for everything because I could not judge where the hands were meant to be because they weren't there. You know what I'm saying? I just could not judge that at all. So anyway, that, um, that watch is, is very safely packed away. <laughs> and I've got one that's got a, a second hand as well, so I'm, I'm never out of time now. <laughs> Right, um, that's, that's, that's absolutely enough about me. So what I'd like to do now is um, we had a talk from the Davis um, Foundation. 
the Davis program, should I say, which is a program that I believe can, can help dyslexic people very much with their focus and their concentration and their expressive writing. And that's a lot um, that they can, you know, that they can't do, expressive writing especially. Um, and Alex, who was the, the speaker at that time, said to us, and this made so much sense to me, as if you close your eyes, okay, and can you picture an elephant? Very simple, you can picture an elephant. And if you close your eyes, can you picture a pile of books? Yeah? And you close your eyes, can you picture that? And all you see is what? T-H-E. Yeah? Okay? That's exactly how a dyslexic feels. Because he's, he's, he's reading, and he can see all these pictures, and then voila, that's it, there's the. And he gets confused, and then he just goes everywhere else, except on what he's actually concentrating on. And then the other thing is, is that we've got, to, I'm going to um, just take the four people in the corner here, okay? What I'd like you to do for me is to tell me the, the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. But you aren't allowed to use A and, or A and N or an N, okay? So now you're going to try and, try and tell me this, the, the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Do you know where to start? No. no. <laughs> That's exactly what a dyslexic feels like. Okay, they don't know where to stay, they don't know how, you know, they, there's too many things going on. Um, Dr. Tilly Mortimer, who we had a conference with a, a little while ago, she explained it as learning to drive. When, we, when you drive, okay, you've got your gears, you've got your mirrors, you've got your indicators, you've got everything like that. Um, and there's a lot to do and to remember, okay. And it's exactly the same how uh, dyslexic feels when they're reading, it's layered. There's all kinds of things he's got to remember and concentrate on and things like that, which makes it difficult for him. Um, sorry. <laughs> so my question, my question to you is where are we with dyslexia in South Africa? Okay, it's a scary one. I came back from London, so I've been home for three years. I came back from London and I went to my first conference to find out about dyslexia. And the professor stood up and he was introducing actually Dr. Tilly Mortimer at that time as well. And he said, mm, we don't like to use the D word in South Africa, do we? I nearly fell off my chair. I nearly did. Um, and for example, I'm, in my three years, I've had quite a few experience and met a, a large amount of students. The one student took 17 years before she knew that her learning difficulty was called dyslexia. 17 years of her parents going from pillar to post, pillar to post, spending money, education psychologists, um, OTs, um, speech therapists, all that kind of stuff, and no one had ever said to them that her daughter was dyslexic. And after they knew that they were dyslexic, that she was dyslexic, it made life easier. I had another little boy who is, took 11 years, 11 years to find out that his learning difficulty is dyslexia. And information is power. So if the dyslexic knows what's happening in his brain. He can start um, developing coping mechanisms for himself. And this little boy at 11, I said to the parents, if you want to, explain to him exactly what's happening. The next day, he went up to his teacher, big smile on his face, ear to ear, said I'm dyslexic, promptly sat down and wrote a paragraph in 20 minutes, something we've been trying to get him to do for three months. It makes you think. Um, the RADA website, um, which, which is really coming on, <laughs> bit by bit, <laughs> um, but it's been running for a year, and I've learned so many, people have come through that website, unbelievable. I've been speaking to parents especially that have been in tears. The horror stories I've been hearing are just heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. And, um, but that's where, we, that's where we come in, that's where the association, co association comes in and we can refer and we can give you some guidance and, and things like that and hopefully we can grow that as much as possible. Um, and, uh, sorry, hold on a sec, I just have to <laughs> go to the notes. Um, the one thing also that struck me is that all the dyslexic people that I've met, the adult dyslexic people that I've met, work for themselves makes you think, yeah? Um, so I'm appealing to each and every one of you for your help to support and educating South Africa in becoming dyslexic friendly. Now, last but not, but not least, definitely not least, is um, uh, because I'm dyslexic, <laughs> my Afrikaans is not good. <laughs> 
but I would like to try. So I'm going to read this, okay, a special message. Sandra, ik wil baie graag namens allemaal in Zuid-Afrika want aan dyslexie le vir jou baie baie dankie sê. Dier hierdie verenigings stil jy a spreekbeis daar om mense in te lig en te inspireer. Persoonlik vir my is dit a eer en verreg om hierdie pad saam met jou te gaan loop. Dit was a groot droom van jou wat nou bewaar, bewaarheid geword het. Baie dankie.